Foundation. Uh, some of you, most of you probably already know that uh, this chamber offices are uh, new, and uh, this is our inaugural event. So <laughs> if there's any glitches, sorry about that, but uh, I hope you understand. Uh, you know, the, the chamber's mission is to promote trade and investment, but we like to expand it to help uh, institutions uh, who we think, uh, or, or that can also contribute to the betterment of Brazil. And uh, we are honored to have Marcos Benicio Cipero as our chair. He's a board member. He has participated in every one of 15 editions of the Gama with me. We also have here some board members with us here at Gauch. We have Joe Weiss from Miami. And I'm honored to introduce our panel today. We're going to be celebrating tomorrow human rights. It's a very important moment for us to discuss human rights diversity and inclusion. Uh, Marcus has always championed human, human rights to his career. Leia is an activist. Uh, she supports uh, the LGBT rights, most of all. She was uh, open the Olympic Games last year, so it was a beautiful moment. Uh, I have Leia T sitting here on my left, who was the first transsexual to set foot on an Olympic side. Brazil made history, and I am very proud as a Brazilian uh, to have witnessed the whole thing myself. I was working on the cultural program of the Olympics, and immediately after, when we left the stadium, I, I couldn't stop thinking how we could honor someone that has done so much, not only for the LGBT community in Brazil, but globally. Uh, Leia has been uh, advocating and uh, on the forefront of any involvement and engagement of human rights and LGBTQ rights. Uh, it's actually we, uh, the community, and many people that are uh, media acceptors in Brazil, we truly believe that the public health system in Brazil changed uh, and change its rules and regulations because of Leia. <coughs> and this unique, uh, <coughs> we are not that much. <laughs> and we are so uh, uh, you. <laughs> happy to have her uh, here with us because it's a unique opportunity to to hear from someone that broke all taboos, came from a family <coughs> of uh, soccer players, and uh, suddenly is on the cover of most important session magazines around the world. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your <laughs> path and uh, the work that you've been doing and how do you see the today's generation moving towards a more respectful and uh, um, accepting and uh, inclusive uh, world. First, I'm going to say sorry because my English is not that good. <laughs> and uh, I think it's a lot. We, are, we live in a country in Brazil where it's one of the first countries in the world for the violence. And where it's one of the first countries where more uh, people die from the LGBT community. Apparently, it's two for a day, but it's much more every day because the people, they don't, they don't. You know, like we have we have no um, value in that country. Well, every day is much more of that. And we are uh, living a really difficult moment in, in our life because I think it is a time like starting a time to change. I doesn't need anything. <laughs> he was too sweet to me. <coughs> no, I don't change. Like, we all change. We were all together in this, in this we are all together in this fight. Well, the, I, uh, the things I did was like live my life in my point of view. You know, like for me, living is like share love. And uh, when these things happened with me and my family and everything, of course, was like a big, big thing because normally, like, we are, the people see us, like, especially in Brazil and in Italy too. Because complicated for the religion and things, and they see us like in a different way for how we are. Like they see us like a prostitute or just something, 
some people who just want, just deserve uh, like physical things. They can't see us in, a, in another thing. And the things start to happen with me was like, they give me a chance, thanks to my father, because he was a famous soccer player. They give me a chance to speak, to show myself and have the opportunity, like, because I was a model, well, I was showing my, my body, my physical, but I keep that that advantage, because I could be a transgender and say, like, I don't wanna say anything, I'm gonna live my life like a girl, and that's all. But at one point I was like, why I came that way for? Like, if I can't share all these problems I have, like, we, we need to share the problems we all have together. And I was like, it doesn't make sense, this distance transsexuality in this world and uh, without sharing and without do something to try at least try to change. Of course I never had the pretension to change the world but changing my little things. And that was what happened. Like what I choose to try to help. And I choose to try to speak, put my voice and speak about it. And it I think it's wor it works a little bit because I went in some place where any people like us never had the chance to, to be there or to be listened by them. And uh, today, like, I think the things start to change. Like, we, 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 we was a group of people who believe in integration and who believe that like, the LGBT community can be integrated with everyone and have the opportunity to work because we had no, we still don't have, because in Brazil is starting to change, but we have another country where if you are transgender, you go to the jail, you can get killed by them. Well, um, there's still a lot of things to do. And when I, when, I, when I do, when I try to help, and when I try to be integrated on this society, I can, I see every day is much how bigger is the things we have to do to change. And it's not, and that is why I'm here, and that is why I think we are all here, to share this. People dying every day for us fault. It's my fault, it's your fault, because we don't look at that. People is dying, guys. You no, know, like, we need to change something, you know, like, and I'm here, and I'm trying to do my best. I know it's nothing compared with many other transgender like I know and they try to survive it right now and they they get in killing and violence and which you know like they much walk much more warrior of me but I'm trying to represent all these people who's dying every day, suffering, getting killed, get left from the family and have no right to love and be loved. Well, I don't need anything. I, I really, for me, like I just say thank you very much. I don't know why I'm here because I'm just a person like everyone here who trying to live and share love. We do need to recognize that um, humanitarian efforts and uh, and uh, caring and giving and sharing is something that we all have inside of us. Uh, we are equal when we are happy, and we are also equal when we are sad. We all try, <coughs> we all feel the pain, we all feel acceleration, and that, that doesn't change from any one of us. And I don't remember when I was coming to be here that I was going to choose to be gay and white, and, uh, and life would be beautiful, because it's not like that, it just happens. We are, we are here and we should be uh, aware that our differences is what makes us the same. This is an amazing, amazing thing to remember on an everyday life. From living in Rio de Janeiro and uh, growing up in Rio de Janeiro, living in Rio, and getting to the covers of magazines and to fashion uh, shows in, in the main capitals of the world, how, how was that? for you, for your life, how transforming that was? Um, I was, um, because that was, I was still uh, up in, in this point of view, because I was, when I started my mission, I was living in a really privileged family. My father had a good condition, like good schools in Italy, and uh, 
that was the point, like, when I realized it was a transgender and, like, because I was covering that thing, like, my family never understood because they never had this information. So. And when I realized that, I went to this another world, which I didn't know exists. That was the point when it started to um, to be part of them and uh, and, and uh, try to help that world because it was like someone come from out and for me it was a shock to see how was the quality of life they had. But they had no quality. That was terrible. If they were living in the street, you have no chance to work, you have no chance to go to the hospital and be respected of how you are and uh, you suffer discrimination like 24 hours a day. You can't go out in a day because you are, you are some of us, they have not like this apparent how the stereotype of women need to be. You know, like, well, I start to see all these realities and I was in shock because it was like, it's not possible. Like, how can people live like that? And these girls, they came to me, they become like, like they are you know, good friends and, and they came to me and they were like, yeah, this is how we live. You're gonna have in every in ten transsexual, seven they kill yourself for the situation of the system, the system today. Well, when I start to realize all this reality and I start to see how they live, you know, like you have to sell your body, you have to go in such a deep and heavy uh, reality just to be what you want to be, you know, like it's not, it's not a chance, you have to be. No, you don't want to be. You have, it's something much more magical, stronger of all these things. And that moment, I realized, when I saw everything, all these things, and my family, of course, accepted me, but before my family accepted me, they came to me and they said, your family is never going to accept you. You're going to be in the street, you're going to be broken, like us, your life is fucked up. I'm sorry, but the half that was what they say to me. And I, I in, for a few days of my life, I was like them. I was living in that reality. I was like, okay, I have to be a prostitute. I have to sell my body for like this horrible person who going to pay me like an object and I have to can to have money to pay my rent and eat something because I never gonna have a chance to go in, a, in a working like a normal person like everyone. And when I realized that, that moment was the stronger moment of my life because I saw how my I, I was the first time I was from the privileged life. Everything was fine. Everything was amazing. To go in that deep in, an, in this another world which is so far away from what I, I saw it and like sometimes we see these things in a movie or whatever but like we well, are yeah cool cool but you never felt that and I felt that in the moment like going the street maybe have to be a prostitute maybe have to do going that deep moment and uh, when my family accepted me when I spoke with my family because they say like you need to be a prostitute to get some money look at how hard it is you have to get if you want to survive, you need to go to the, the street to get some money. Because then, if your family doesn't accept you, at least you have some money to eat. Well, I was really in this situation, was really difficult, and I didn't spoke with my friends, of course, of course, they, after they helped me and everything. But what I, I was like, it's not possible to be like that. For sure, some love somewhere, like, not possible. And I went to my mother and I spoke with my mother, crying like crazy. I was like, I love you so much, you like the love of my life. Please don't take me away. Can you imagine you have to say to your family, please don't take me away because I'm, I never killed anyone, I never did anything wrong in my life. I'm just what I am. Please love me. It's the most humiliating things you can have in your life. Like praying to have a love from your family. You know, like that is what I did. And in a moment when I did, of course, my mom, she saw me, she looked at me, she, I was like, you know, flourish, she was like, you know, stand, 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 you're my baby, you know, like, I'm gonna stay with you. And I saw the love in my family, of my mother and my sisters and my brothers and my father. In that moment, 
I realized how lucky I am. Because I remembered all my friends. And I was like, God, why did this with me and not with these other people? That was the moment, like, my family accepted me. And uh, Ricardo, like a friend of mine, who they was in the fashion industry, they saw this reality. They lived with me in this reality. And they started to make me modern. Because to them, I, w cause I, w I w was a such a strong moment for me. And I was so blessed that everything happened with me. I was like, I can't believe these things in that way. You know, like, I'm too lucky. And we need to share like how lucky and how amazing is my family. And it's not amazing. My family is just a normal people. You know, like people who love the daughters and like my father and my sisters, like the, the sister, you know, like in that moment was, I think, I start, when I started modeling all the rest, like of the fashion and business or whatever, you know, like big brands and Paris and all, all, these, all these things for me never make me like, everything I did and say is my agent, you know, and everything we doing, I don't care for the glamour. I really, I live in a small city in the middle of nowhere in Brazil named Alto Paraíso. I'm living there like with the native indigenous people. Well, I really don't care for all these glamorous things, but I think it's really important to show like how normal can be a transgender working in like and having a glamorous life too. That is what we start to work on because all my mother career, I never did because I want to be a model or for me to be a male and be a model. I did to show the people how like, we can be part of the society. You know, like I can work, I can be sitting here, I can speak with you, I can I can do a fashion show like other girls, I can I can make a contract, big contract to, like of any other girl who have like her career career. Well that is the point of my work, you know, like to show to the people how we can be integrated. And this is not gonna hurt anyone. You know, like that is of course some people see that. I have to say, I mean Zaya has been managing uh, Leia's career in a very exemplary way and uh, it's it's been so fantastic to be working with him and uh, and see how incredibly uh, skilled he is as a as a PR and as an agent. And, uh, and he shared with me that Leia is involved with two major campaigns. One is with Redkin, the other one with Nike. And uh, we see that more and more uh, we are understanding that big corporations are socially involved with this transformation that is so necessary. I believe, I trust that uh, my peers and my friends that are here, that I am very humble uh, to honor them in this very special way that we will continue to show our uh, will and our desire and our thoughts to change uh, and make this a better world for everybody. I, I, I'm a firm believer that if we start a movement and it's a movement for the good and a movement that will benefit everybody as a whole, as a community, we can only move and march forward. And we need the help of everybody, each one of you. It's, it, it starts with, you know, inside. It starts with our own desire, with our own knowledge, and with our own respect for each other. And uh, that being said, I would like once again to thank the Chamber and uh, everybody here for your presence. It has been like an amazing opportunity to talk a little bit about diversity and inclusion. Well, I would just like to say that the Chamber, we organize panels on uh, uh, political and economic outlook, uh, labor reform, tax, and uh, what we saw here, this is a little bit out of our reach. Uh, we did not organize this, but I really want to congratulate uh, Marcos for putting together this great panel with uh, Rodrigo, Leia, uh, Ricardo. I think they all added something. I myself, I didn't know what to expect, but I, I grew uh, inside, okay, as a result of all these words, and I do think uh, we were all privileged to have heard that. So I thank you uh, very much for being here, and hope you enjoyed our new venue. So thank you so much. Thank you.